Hello and welcome to a very special edition of The Money Show where we're going to be talking about the debt side of the investment because there are a lot of opportunities that are available be it on the equity side or on the debt side as well as when you're looking for a safer investment options then you also go for FDs. But today we're going to be discussing about the nuances of the debt instruments and how they can actually offer you better returns than FDs and what are the nuances that you should be knowing about the debt side of the instruments so let's try and un- let's try and find an answer to all of that with a very special guest of mine today onto the show which has been uh, focusing more on the debt side of the instrument has been uh, telling and guiding our viewers that how in the longer run in comparison to the FTs and the debt instrument funds you can actually have better returns and to answer and guide us more on that we have been joined by Vijay Mantri chief investment strategist and co-founder of JRL Money hi Vijay it's great to have you on the show uh, first of all if we um, because we had you almost a year back and we had almost the same discussion that between FD as well as debt instrument how should one go about but in the past one year, we have seen the FD's rate improving a little bit. But because you have been doing a historical analysis of how these FD's and debt side of the instruments and rates have changed. So at this point in time, why you still believe that debt instruments still offer good opportunities in comparison to FD's? So if you look at a year back, we have been recommending debt mutual from, from since 2023. And if you see, see last one year return, the one-year return has been very good, around 7.5% for most debt product. One year back, FD rate was 6, 6.5%. So even for a one-year period, mm. the outperformance was 1%. When you look at FDs, whether it's a bank FD or corporate FD, one need to understand that the bank borrow at the lowest cost among all the entities in the market, be it individual, be it AAA companies, be even central government. So, for instance, if you look at three-month bank FD, it is four to four and a half percent, but three-month T bill is six ninety. So, whether where where one should go and invest their hard-earned money, if you look at current account, saving account, the rate of interest is zero percent to four percent. Hmm. The call money offer is six seventy basis point return right now. If you look at one year back, one year return of equity arbitrage fund has been seven and a half percent. Tax efficient, 660 to 675, tax free post tax return. Why this happened? Because most people believe that fixed rate offered is a great way of investing. Hmm. But actually, market linked instruments are much better, much more efficient. And if you look at the horizon of 20 to 30 years, on an average, a market linked debt product, which is a debt mutual fund, will offer you 1 to 1.5% higher return over a 30 year period. Lots of people don't understand that. We, I have seen people haggling, we want to invest in direct mutual fund, we'll mm-hmm. save 1%, fine you save 1%, but 15% of the household saving goes into FD and they are not bothered about it. You and me do not have any option but to pay indirect taxes, to pay direct taxes. But on investment view option, how to defer or not to pay or pay at much lower rate of interest, I don't know why people are not even looking at that. So I think investors need to look at an option outside bank FD. And then they will figure out that they can earn 1 to 1.5% more return than the typical bank FD. But Vijay, uh, the point being that if one goes for an FD, um, the bank generally doesn't ask you to take the money out. They just go ahead and then renew your FD on on uh, on their own and people are happy doing that but when you are saying that 1% extra return is what you could generate so that the that the alpha generation is over there and over the years how can one benefit through the compounding and how long can people stay in the debt instruments because when we talk about the rate cycle then we do take it in a short term uh, period but in the long term tenure how should one strategize its uh, investment in debt so it's a very good question. Generally, people believe that uh, that FDs are for shorter duration. But when you look at FD, how does people look at FD? They don't look at time period. They look at where we're getting the highest return. So, three years ka jada acha lag raha hai, two years ka jada acha lag raha hai. We'll invest money mm-hmm. there. But FD decisions are not short term in nature. FD decisions are long term in nature. They are thirty year old, thirty thirty year old long. Because, for instance, 
more fixed deposit get renewed than new fixed deposits are being created as you yourself mentioned when you start earning at the age of 25 or first fd may be 25000 rupees but at the age of 60 our fd could be 5 crore 6 crore rupees so fd decisions are very very long term in nature and i'll give some two simple statistics uh hdfc mutual fund did a study of 1990 to 2022 over a 32 year period wheat prices tur dal and petrol their prices compounded at 7.5% to 8.5% now tell me for 32 year mm-hmm. which debt instrument delivered this kind of investment performance only two bidla income fund which got launched in october 95 for a 28 year period is deliver 9% compounded return the second is kota guild fund which got launched in december 98 completed 25 years of performance deliver 9% compounded return people don't understand the difference between coupon rate and compound rate hmm. so i'll just take a very simple illustration i was part of the hdfc mutual fund team when we launched hdfc liquid fund in october 2020 October 2000 that fund completed 23 years in a 23 year period the fund generated 6.9% CAGR okay. but suppose i convert them into simple rate of interest it simple interest rate come close to 15% per annum so people don't understand the difference between compounding and coupon rate in mutual fund your money compound there's no finite time period ek saal ho gaya now i need to take money out and redeploy mm-hmm. in debt mutual fund you can continue as long as it is possible and why very simple thing investor need to do whenever they are looking at investing in debt mutual fund don't look at historical return it has no meaning what they need to do a very simple thing look at what time period they are looking at investing look at what is the fd rate offered for that time period and compare with similar maturity debt mutual fund and get the ytm will get all the answer it's very simple and the money compound no annual taxation you can do loss harvesting which is not available in any other instrument mm-hmm. which is available here and by the way people chase return in debt it is not they go for safety only when they can exit they, they go for safety as they go for uh, you know chasing return mm-hmm. and one more thing in, investor can do which debt mutual fund can do effectively for you or equity arbitrage fund can do for you you invest your hard earned money into equity arbitrage fund transfer the gain into equity mutual fund or invest in a debt mutual fund and transfer the gain into equity mutual fund mm-hmm. you are protecting your capital and the gain transfer create lots of alpha so i'll give a simple illustration same mm-hmm. sdfc liquid fund suppose you invest 10 lakh rupees in october 2000 and just transfer the gain into sdfc capital builder you have generated 13% cagr compounded over a 23 year period no oh, that's a, that's a great number too exactly me. and without you know you know facing a volatility even for a in day in the markets yeah but i don't think people are are looking into these thing but it is very very important that you need to look at these things if you want to become champion you need to think even the smallest thing you eat you have to be extremely careful okay but vijay um, if somebody is watching our show and gets convinced that between fd and debt mutual funds he should go with the debt side of the investing then for the benefit of our viewers any of the top funds that come to your mind at this point in time where people can go ahead and look at buying and or also if you can guide our viewers that what are the top key criteria they should look at when they are analyzing any debt mutual funds because for equity investment we have a lot of factors large cap small cap other type of schemes are there but how to go about the debt uh, side of the investment? very simple figure out the time period for which you are investing so suppose your time period is up to 7 days call money for and you can pick out any fund houses call money fund because uh, the portfolio is identical across because it is a lending between banks okay. and right now it is 670 beyond that 7 to 7 to 90 days look at the liquid fund and in debt mutual fund just look at top fund houses only don't go beyond that and one of the best proof is that what happened in 2018 in 2018 there are some fund houses gone through challenging period but there are some fund houses which has not got impacted at all so icici mutual fund hdfc mutual fund sbi mutual fund and bandhan mutual fund or sundram and axis these are six fund houses which didn't have any problem on the debt portfolio side i'm not saying other oh, other had or not but i'm mm-hmm. saying six i remember don't it didn't have sure. anything so if you ask me where one should be putting money a 0 to 7 days call money fund 7 to 90 days liquid fund or sbi or hdfc or icici 
90 days to one year, you could look at floating rate fund, again ICICI, Nippon, HDFC. One year beyond, we need to look at equity arbitrage fund, where I think the Invesco is doing very well, Edelweiss has done very well. Two to three year plus money, you could look at in ICICI, all season bond fund, you could look at HDFC Great Opportunities Fund, HDFC Corporate Bond Fund, Excess Strategic Bond Fund and Nippon Corporate Bond Fund. All of them had a great track record. Just do that. <laughs> okay. So, that's for the benefit of our viewers that they also got the top recommendations from Vijay as well. But uh, Vijay, before we let you go, um, this year is expected to be quite volatile. There are a lot many big triggers that the markets is looking forward to. Hopefully, it turns out to be good for investors. But we have elections in India and US. There's a rate cut expected. So, because when we and if you have done the analysis historically, a couple of sectors don't tend to perform that well. So, which sectors do you believe that could be the winners for 2024, and which sectors could little uh, take a back seat at this point in time? And how should one strategize their investing given these big events? So, in my opinion, first of all, people need to examine balance advantage fund and multi asset fund. That will be much better for them. Okay. Sectorally, I think banking and financial services industries looks in a great shape because for the 20 year period, they outperformed Nifty 50 and Nifty 500. But in last four year, Nifty 500 deliver 19% CAGR, Nifty 50 deliver 16% CAGR and BFS had delivered only 10% CAGR. All the balance sheet problems, everything is behind them. And when we talk about BFS side, it's just not the bank, NBFC, stock exchanges, broking company, RTA, mm -hmm. fintech platform. You have so many varieties available, insurance companies. So BFS side, in my opinion, is a great shape right now. And last couple of years, they suffered because two leading names, HDFC and Kotak, had their own challenges. And FIs were selling. And FI had a higher holding in these stocks. So there was a continuous dumping from their side. Okay. So that is a one reason. And right now, I think the FI money, when the FI money comes, I think the BFSI will be the biggest beneficiary. The second sector, in my opinion, which is going to do very well is going to be healthcare. And healthcare is just not one year story. Healthcare mm. is a 20 year story. I'll give you mm. two, three very simple things. Uh, on an average, uh, a patient in US get two to three tests, in India, two to three tests done. In US, it's eight to 10 tests. All the new doctors which are coming, they are relying more on science rather than just. Mm. Uh, Biosimilar, drug manufacturing, hospital, mm. health insurance companies. So it is actually the mega trend. We were 23 crore people above 55 years of age. Aap noodle khana band kar doge, mm. but aapki BP ki dawai chalu ho gaye, toh phir jab tak aur... Jab tak so jab I think uh, uh, to me that looks very good. Where I will be really, really cautious right now is SME segment and small cap. We believe small caps are... I don't think there's a great idea as in a small cap. Right. And if you look at big fund houses, if you look at any small cap fund, mm. they have 5 to 9% stake in many companies and these companies are not very liquid. So if there's a challenge, mm. I would see an SME segment definitely. I'll just segment on the small cap. Large cap, I think, is in very good shape right now. All right. Uh, with this, uh, we let you go on that, Vijay. Thank you so much for joining us today on this particular discussion. It was great having you, like always. Uh, but with this, viewers, it's time to slip into a very short break in this edition of The Money Show. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. And then it's the time to take note of all your portfolio-related queries by yet another guest. So stay tuned for more.